guys and welcome back. Today we're going to make some creamy, delicious mushroom risotto. We're going to be using the Instant Pot to make it quick. You guys know I love my Instant Pot. Also, today's video is in collaboration with Vitacost, so everything that you're going to need for this recipe, aside from like your basic produce, you're going to need an onion, some garlic, and mushrooms. Everything else you can find easily on Vitacost. They have the best prices on natural, organic, non-GMO. It's my go-to natural grocery store online. And you guys know that. I've been shopping there for years and I've been working with them for a little over a year now. So we're gonna get right into the recipe. The first thing you're gonna do is take your mushrooms. We're gonna use the dehydrated mushroom medley. Why I like this so much is because it's got a good blend of mushrooms that are hard for me to find in my area. Namely the porcini mushroom, which a lot of people use for their mushroom risotto, but I don't hardly find where I'm at. So we're gonna be getting those into our risotto by means of some dehydrated ones, and we are also going to be making our broth this way. So I've got four cups of water here, and I just dumped in those porcini mushrooms. We're also gonna add a little bit of the Better Than Bouillon. I love this stuff. It comes in a lot of different flavors. This is so good if you're stir-frying basically anything. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons. Now I'm just gonna take our bowl over and I'm gonna put it in the microwave just on low for about three to five minutes. The recipe that I got this from was actually sent to me by a subscriber. So I will link a blog post with all of the ingredients, measurements, and the original recipe that I have based this off of in my description bar. So make sure you check that out. But that original recipe I got it to, it says about three to five minutes. So basically till it's like simmering and it's warm in there. If you don't have a microwave, we didn't until recently, you could just put it on the stove and just kind of heat it up until they're simmering. Guys, it's so bad. I've been without a microwave for so long that I almost like don't know how to use my microwave. And the other day, I actually I was trying to reheat a cup of coffee, and I put it in there. And I was trying to use the settings, and I put for two cups. Really, there was only one cup in my mug, and it it went for four minutes. I mean, it boiled over everywhere. It was a huge mess. Uh, somebody help me. <laughs> so while that's cooking, I'm just gonna go ahead and finally dice our onions and then also thinly slice our mushrooms, get them ready. One thing I wanna do too with our Instant Pot is go ahead and get it heating up. So we're just gonna go ahead and press saute. We're gonna add in about two tablespoons of olive oil to our pot, and also a quarter cup of whatever type of vegan butter you'd like to use. Let me know if you guys like this like real-time cooking style video where I'm just kind of making dinner and I'm chatting my way through it, showing you guys how I do it. I feel like a lot of recipes that I do, I save time by multitasking. So for instance, heating up that pot, I'm also chopping. I don't chop all of my ingredients before I get started. I kind of do them as I need them and as I can do one thing that I'm doing the next thing. So I feel like I save a lot of time doing that. But if you guys like to see the recipe just all at once thrown in, um, let me know that too, because I can definitely switch it up. I know some of you guys will save this recipe, so we'll actually be cooking together. And I think that's a lot of fun. All right, our microwave just went off, so I'm gonna grab the mushrooms. I think they need about another minute. Okay, I did those for about two more minutes. Ooh, I took a little too long chopping that. Okay, we're turning off our saute, our pan is hot, and I'm gonna chop up our mushrooms because I do wanna cook those before we do our onion and garlic. Nothing crazy here, I'm just chopping off the ends and then I'm gonna do some thin slices. Get those going in the pot. We're gonna cook the mushrooms for about eight to 10 minutes and you just want them to get nicely browned. There is something nice about cooking them long enough to get them a little bit browned. It gives that extra flavor, and you're gonna wanna bring that out. Now I have to take a minute to say thank you guys so, so much for all of the love and support on the launch of my book. If you hadn't already heard, I just came out with my own ebook for the Instant Pot. So it's called Instant Dinners, and it's filled with 10 quick and easy dinners that you can make in your Instant Pot. And you guys, the response on the book 
has been so great. I'm already getting pictures on Instagram of you guys trying the recipes, which is so exciting. It's really neat to see recipes that I make for my family and that I have like perfected over and over again and see you guys trying them out and how they're working with your family. If you got the book and you've been trying them out, please send me your pictures because I would love to show you some love on my Instagram and repost those. I'm loving it. I've gotten a lot of questions about the ebook in terms of is it gluten free or can the recipes be made gluten free or um, can they be made dairy free? And yes and yes. As long as you're using a gluten free pasta for the pasta dishes, then the entire cookbook is gluten free. And also dairy free if you substitute the cheese in the chicken and cheese enchiladas, if you substitute that out for like diet cheese, which is what I do when I'm making it for my husband. So. Yes, if you're curious about that, you can definitely make them that way. And just a little sneak peek at a few of the recipes. I've got my pork carnitas recipe. Oh, those are so good. That might be one of my, that might be my favorite. I also have a chili verde recipe. It makes the most amazing and super tender pork. I also want to try making that with jackfruit. If you are someone who's vegan and you're watching, uh, that would be so, so good. Of course, my macaroni and cheese recipe, you'd need to substitute out for diet cheese, but that can totally be made vegan, as well as the one pot spaghetti. I've also got my quinoa and sweet potato bowls recipe on there. So much good stuff. And to get you guys excited for something that hasn't come out yet, but will come out soon, my Instant Pot Cheesecake recipe should be coming to you guys next week. If not next week, the week after. I haven't filmed it yet, but I have perfected it. So. It is so ready to go and it's so delicious. I know you guys are going to love it. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss that one because it's going to be good. I'm just stirring those up and I did put it back on our high saute. These are going to cook like 5-10 minutes and our mushrooms are done in the microwave. So let me grab those and we're going to strain them. So I'm just going to take out the mushrooms from the broth. We'll reserve the broth aside and I'll chop up those mushrooms and get them into the pot too. Beautiful. Let's just toss these straight on the cutting board. Mm, it smells so good already in here. And we'll give these a nice rough chop. I love these little mushroom packs so you can really get a bunch of different mushrooms into your recipes without actually having to purchase tons of different types. Because I don't know about your store, but like my local grocery store, they really only carry two different types. It's either the button mushrooms or, ooh, I forget what the others are called, cremini I think is what it's called. But in this mushroom pack, it's dried porcini, shiitake, cremini, mitake, oyster mushrooms, and they're all certified organic. So it's a quick way to get a really good variety and like all of those good flavors. Let's toss those in. looks nice and cooked down and we're gonna go ahead and add in our onions and we're gonna get these nice and translucent just just about three to five minutes in there we're also gonna add in our two garlic cloves now you guys I talked about this in my last instant pot video this is my brand new garlic press and I'm so excited about it this one well let me show you before I get it all dirty this one is so so cool. Not only is this a normal garlic press where you can put in, you know, your garlic and then you can smash it down, but once you've got all of that gunk in here, you can use the back side of this to push all of it out. And it helps with cleaning. You just rinse it under the water. You guys, this thing is brilliant. You need to order it. I got mine on Amazon. It was like 15 bucks. It's super sturdy and the grip on this thing is great. And it's, I feel like it's really heavy and good quality. So. A garlic press for me is such a kitchen essential. It For me, it's definitely a minimalist kitchen essential. Literally, I'm using this thing every single day. And fresh garlic just infuses so much flavor into your food. We're also gonna add in our arborio rice. Now this is our star ingredient. This is what makes this risotto. We are gonna add in a cup and a half. Now, I love this bag, Lundberg Family Farms. I have been buying their rice for years and it has the coolest Seal. I've never seen any other brand do this. Can you guys see that? It's like a, I don't know, when you push it together, it's just so easy to seal. So you've always got like a nice, tight, like airlock seal. So it stays fresh. 
And also they have really high quality ingredients. So non-GMO, sustainable farming. Just a really nice brand if you're looking for someone to support in your international foods. So we're gonna do a cup and a half. And let me show you guys the Arborio rice. See how it just kind of looks like a shorter, like fatter grain? That's what makes this risotto. You gotta have Arborio rice for risotto. And we're gonna stir that to get it nice and browned, just a few minutes. We're also gonna add in one tablespoon of soy sauce. I think this really complements the mushroom. And also something that may be new, uh, we're also gonna use a tablespoon of miso paste. Miso paste is basically fermented soybeans and it's, it's really common in Japanese cooking. I'm also gonna add in a quarter cup of white wine vinegar. This is gonna help to deglaze the pan. You can actually use like dry white wine if you have it. We're not really wine drinkers, so I don't have that on hand, but this helps to deglaze the pan. You wanna make sure you don't have any browned bits stuck on the pan. Kinda of wanna be quick mixing everything in here because that rice just wants to suck everything up. Now we're gonna add our broth. So that was, that's about four cups from our mushrooms and everything from earlier. Make sure, again, there's no browned bits stuck to the bottom. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the lid onto our Instant Pot and we're gonna turn the back valve to sealing. Also, we're gonna hit cancel on that saute and we're gonna pressure cook for just five minutes. All right, I've got some cleaning up to do, you guys. When I'm putting food together, I'm throwing stuff here and there and I'm working. I'm gonna clean up and I'll meet you guys back when the timer goes off. Now I'm sure there are a lot of you out there who are watching this video who have your own Instant Pot and you guys have your favorite recipes. I would love to know down in the comments what your favorite thing is to make in your Instant Pot, whether it's your favorite recipe and you've got a link and you can share that, or just let me know some of your favorite things to make, whether that's quinoa or rice or black beans. Leave it in a comment down below. And if you guys are new to the Instant Pot entirely, I would love to share with you my Instant Pot 101 series. I'll have it linked up in the cards, but it gives you a rundown of how to use the pot. And if you've got one, but you haven't really had the guts yet to try it out, it's a really great place to start. And it'll completely familiarize you with how to use it. And you'll be confident with your first recipe. So make sure you check that out if you're new to the pot. But those of you guys who've been using it, let me know those recipes because I'm always looking for new ones to try. All right guys, our timer just went off, so I'm gonna go ahead and release the steam here, release all that pressure, and I'm also gonna chop up some fresh Italian parsley that we're gonna use to add some brightness to this recipe. So here we go, stand back, make sure your kitchen is cleared of little ones, don't put your hand over the steam, you know the drill. All right, our pressure pin just dropped, so let's go ahead and open it up. Oh yeah, looks so amazing in there. First thing you wanna do is stir it up. So let me grab a little pot holder. These little things come in so handy. I got these in my little accessory set and yeah, they come in so handy. As you stir, it's gonna let off a little bit more of the steam and some of the moisture from the risotto. And that's also gonna give it its creamy consistency. Now I'm gonna be adding in one third cup of the Parma vegan Parmesan cheese. We love this stuff, you guys. This is so yummy on basically any kind of fish. It's basically nutritional yeast, sunflower seeds, hemp seeds, and it adds that like cheesy deliciousness and just a, a flavor you really don't get anywhere else. We also wanna add in a little bit of pepper and you can season with salt to taste. Let's see how we're doing. Mm. I'm actually not even gonna add any more salt. I think it's perfect there. We're gonna add in our parsley. And then my last ingredient, this is my secret ingredient. This is organic coconut cream. And this is just another beautiful vegan ingredient to make it that extra little bit of creamy and just pure deliciousness. If you're wanting to keep this more of a low calorie, you could definitely forgo the coconut cream. Now I'm just adding about a pretty heaping tablespoon out of this can and I'm going for more of the white coconut part, so that really, really creamy 
Not so much just like the coconut flavor, but like the cream. And it just like melts so beautifully into the risotto. You could totally add that whole can in there if you want. But if you're trying to watch calories, maybe just a little bit, you could forgo it if you wanted to. But I like that extra something that it adds. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get myself a bowl and let's do a taste test. Gotta get the perfect bite with some mushrooms in there. Mmm. Mmm. Seriously, this is so amazing, you guys. You've got to make this. If you guys would like the recipe, then don't forget to check out my blog post down below. I'll have more pictures as well, so you can easily pin them from the blog post. So if you want to save the recipe for later and some of your meal planning Pinterest boards, then make sure you check it out and you can save it for later. Also, I'll have the ingredients all linked on the blog post. So if you're looking for the miso paste that I used or the vegan Parmesan, the coconut cream that I use, or even the bouillon, you can find that all on Vitacost and it'll be linked there. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thumbs up if you did. Let me know your favorite Instant Pot recipes down below. If you're looking for more, you can always check up in the cards for my Instant Pot 101 and my last Instant Pot dinner. All right guys, I will see you all soon. Bye guys. Guys, go pin it. Pin the recipe. Seriously, go.